Quad C6. So a long-term update on these FPV cycle, um, 1202.5, 11,500 kV motors. Um, these are made by RCN Power. And these were specifically de designed to fly 1S with the um, three inch props. And these are the gem fan, uh, 30, 3018 in the bi-blade, 3016 in the tri-blade. And I have uh, finally flown this motor enough to where I've beat it up enough to, to, to know basically kind of how it's gonna fail. And um, the good part is, is this is pretty, pretty darn robust, both the motors and the props. And so with these motors, these certainly aren't flying as smooth as they were when they were brand new. And kind of try and show you some of the dings. Um, I fly along the fence line with um, kind of the concrete and the metal. And so these take a good bit of bashing and pounding. And unfortunately, you know, these are robust enough. You can see how thick that metal ring is that the motor stays, you know, they're not quite as smooth as they were, but they stay pretty darn smooth. And these props, you can fly them down until they're they're pretty chewed up. So, you know, when it's new, that blade is going to look more like that. And so I'm flying it on these, and you can see they're pretty like. Let's see if um, I can show you. I think that one. These, you know, they're kind of bent up, beat up, and the edges, the the leading edge is pretty um, uh, pretty beat up. And I've taken them a few times and hit them with uh, a little bit of heat from the lighter to kind of smooth them out. And this still flies just fine. Not as smooth, not as quiet, but it flies just fine even after you've beat it up. Um, <clears throat> so the main failure is these things aren't immune to the whole, um, if you're really torquing on the props, twisting them back and forth to pull them off, they aren't immune to the whole um, bell loosening up from from the motor shaft. And so the nice part is you can just pop in the screws, but I'm gonna show you once you've kind of loosened it up, what happens. Let's get these screws out. And these are just little nylon screws. Um, so the weight isn't terrible on adding those screws, but watch how easy this spins. So I'm just using a little bit of light uh, finger pressure there. And you can see how that shaft just, just spins um, really easy in the motor belt. And that's enough to where when you're flying it like that, you get these funny little um, motions because that slips. Um, a little tip on, uh, cutting those nylon screws, so cutting them to length. What I do to, to cut those is I take um, a little frame like this, so I'll take the screw, put it through the prop, and then put it um, through the, the M2 hole on this two millimeter frame, and then snip it clean with a side cutter at the bottom, and that gives me kind of the perfect length to where it'll go into the motor bell. And um, and not stick out too far and, and give you problems. Um, <clears throat> so other things to know about it, I've, I've flown this quite a bit on both the bi-blades and the tri-blades, flown it quite a bit on 450 high vault and 600 non-high vault. And um, the good part about this is that when I fly it on these bi-blades with JEC uh, 48 kilohertz, with this, you know, smaller, lighter uh, 450, it's not that much smaller and lighter, but it is a little bit, um, I get plenty of flight time. I get a nice satisfying flight time out of this. And so if you already have a bunch of 450s because you've already bought these, then know that you can fly this on the bi-blades of uh, 48 kilohertz, and you should get plenty of flight time easily over three minutes with pretty aggressive flying. Um, if you're stepping up to the tri-blades or... And also, if you're using JSC or the regular um, Bill Heli and you're at 24 kilohertz, you might not get quite to that flight time that you want. Um, depends, obviously, how you fly. But um, really and truly, what you can do is just order these motors, fly them, and if you're not quite getting there, then go ahead, bump up to the 600 milliamp battery. And I'm sure if you get the 600 milliamp battery, you're going to get plenty of flight time. I mean, it's, it's, it'd be pretty hard to crush that thing. Uh, too quickly unless you're in a super open space and then if you're in a really wide open space you know why you find one ass anyways but um so there you go so in terms of which props should you fly i think these props are going to appeal uh, to different people in different ways um i personally i'm, I'm kind of strange i don't know um maybe i'm not the normal 
uh, pilot or whatnot, but I actually prefer the way this flies. It flies a little bigger. It's a little less forgiving, but you can get it going just as agile as the tri -lays. You can do some trees, um, some slalom. And so I don't have a lot of DVR, but I'm going to do a little compilation of me doing my little slalom um, to show you. And this is flown on these bi-blades and beat up like they are that you can still fly it nice and nimble and tight. Uh, the bi-blades, they do feel bigger. Um, they make the quad feel bigger, um, a little more top ends. The, the, if anything, the spooling up effect seems a little bit maybe more on the bi-blades. The tri-blades seem to have a little better lower ends pop than that. But so that was kind of, uh, it's kind of a little interesting. So it's it, maybe not like really a weight issue on the props in terms of that spooling up effect. But maybe I'm not feeling exactly what's happening and I'm not describing it right. But anyways, this on the bi-blades just does feel a little bigger, a little less forgiving. But to me, it kind of feels like more satisfying. Like when you hit the line with this, it took a little finesse. Um, it wasn't quite as easy to do. And, and so it, to me, it's almost a little, a little bit more satisfying of a flight experience. So that's um, my long-term review on the um, uh, on these FPV cycle, uh, 1202.5, 11,500 kV, and just a little bit of DVR with some um, slaloming through some bushes and stuff. Till next time, cheers.